Hey, this is Austin Harmon Mixes, and today we're going to talk about how to mix loud. Now, if you've been behind the desk for a while, you have probably had somebody come up to you and say, turn it down. I know that I have, which is why I have official Austin Harmon Mixes merch sitting behind me. You can see the shirt, turn it down right here in the set, austinharmonmixes.com slash merch if you want to order that. Today, we're going to talk about how you mix loud behind the desk without sending everybody for the doors. Step number one in how to mix loud is to get your environment right. Now, what do I mean by that? To get a great sound, you first have to start with the room in which that sound is being produced. In a live environment, sound is coming out of your public address system. You also have your room, which is factoring into the equation, your chairs, carpet, all of those things. Getting your environment right starts with ensuring that your public address system is actually tuned correctly. What do I mean by tune? Well, did you know that your ears actually don't hear a flat, even frequency response? Your ears actually hear an uneven response based upon the fact that our ears are specifically designed to hear voices. When God created us, he created us to be able to hear each other really well. And therefore, we can't hear specific things like bass or ultra high-end frequencies as well as we can hear the mid-range of our voices. This was discovered in the 1930s by some engineers who worked for a telephone company who were attempting to figure out what the most cheapest and economical way to transmit a voice over the telephone system would be. And they subsequently realized that our ears don't hear evenly by doing a series of tests. If you're interested in what those tests are, you can look up what's called the equal loudness curves. I do have a graphic here on screen for you to see as well. Now, note here that with the equal loudness curves or the flincher munchen curves, if you're kind of one of our older uh, groups of people out there, with the equal loudness curves, you can see that there's actually a dip right around 2K. And that dip in frequency is actually right around the sibilance of my voice, and therefore, uh, you can actually hear the sibilance of vocal vocals better than you can hear every other frequency. Now, why this matters in a live environment and why it matters to uh, how to mix loud is that if you don't actually account for the equal loudness curve, the way that our human ears actually hear whenever you are tuning a PA or setting the overall EQ, tonality, compression, and uh, delay settings, then the PA itself may actually be working against you. Now, trust me when I say, if your PA is not right, you already have shot yourself in the foot whenever you get behind the desk in a live situation. You have to get your environment right. Now, the PA tuning is not the only part of the equation. In some cases, your room that you have may not be acoustically treated and therefore, when sound spreads up, out from the PA, it hits the walls and bounces all around and causes things to be very muddy. And whenever things are muddy, you might make adjustments on the desk that could lead you to creating situations where your mix hurts. Also, having different obstructions in the room can play a factor. If you have, for example, a balcony in your room, you have to take special uh, account for how that balcony may change the sound in your space. Getting the environment right starts with getting your PA, your room, and the environment correct so that whenever you are behind the desk with a band, you're not actually fighting what's coming out of the PA, you are enjoying what's coming out of the PA. Step number two in how to mix loud is get your band right. Now, before you go and text all your band members and tell them they suck, I don't recommend that. Uh, let's talk about what I mean by getting your band right. First and foremost, the loudest thing on stage is the drums, without question. If you go to any church these days, pretty much every church out there, unless you're doing some kind of crazy unplugged acoustic thing, has a live drum set or an electronic drum set on stage. Now, if you have electric drums, you can skip ahead on this part of the video, but if you have live drums like most of us, Pay careful attention to this. First, if you want to mix loud, you want to try and avoid fighting your drums. You want to work with your drums, reinforce your drums. So often, whenever I go into churches that 
uh, have problems with their sound, they're not able to actually reinforce or put microphones on the drums and put them through the PA because the drum set then itself is so loud that they couldn't possibly imagine putting mics on the drums because they're just loud. Why would you do that? Getting your drum set under control is one of the most important aspects of mixing loud. First, think about the treatment that's on the drums itself. If you have a live drum set, try to make sure that you have either baffles or some kind of drum cage around the drum set if you can. This will help to control the drum volume for the audience. Now remember, those clear shields that you see on stage quite often are just reflectors of sound, not necessarily absorbers of sound. If you want to keep your drum set under control, ensure that you pair a sound reflector with a sound absorber so that the live acoustic sound of the drums is actually getting absorbed and is diminished rather than just bouncing around everywhere. If you get your treatment on your drum set right, it's going to go a long way to helping you mix loud. Second step, make sure that the tones on the drums sound awesome. If you have a bad drum tone and you turn it up to 11, they can really hurt your ears and bother them in a very specific way. In my experience, if I have a problem with people complaining that the drums are too loud, yes, I would want to turn them down, see my video on how to handle audio complaints, but also I want to think, are the drums actually dialed in correctly? If the drums are what people are complaining about, is, is the source of the complaint, is it the drums? Are they not dialed in right? Do they not sound very good? Because a good sounding drum, in my experience, people like to listen to. So get your drum set under control. Next, get the rest of the band getting great sounding tones and great sounding musicianship. Now, here's why this matters. If you think about a good band turned up to 11, everybody enjoys that, right? It, everybody's humming along, it sounds cool. But if you think about a bad band and they're turned up to 11, you're taking bad and you're magnifying it. Getting your band's sounds right is a very important step to mixing loud. One of the steps that you can take is if you're struggling with band tone or you're struggling with, well, how do I make that sound good? Listen to somebody who is really good. Listen to some sources that you think sound really pleasing to your ears and try to replicate that in the best way that you can. Getting your mix to sound loud, to sound big, starts with getting your PA right and finishes with getting your band right. Step number three, here comes the secret sauce, what you've all been waiting for, how to mix loud, how to turn it up to 11 without sending everybody for the doors. Here it is. I learned this from an exceptional mix engineer. Mixing loud starts with making sure that you have the correct processing on the master bus. Once you have the PA right and you have your band right, getting the correct processing on your master bus will allow you to ride the dynamics that are on stage and turn it up to 11 without sending everybody for the doors. I have been perfecting over the past number of years how to actually very specifically dial in your master bus so that whenever you turn that fader up, it sounds just the same as it does whenever it's down low. Now, how do you actually accomplish this? First, any kind of master bus processing that you're going to do, and by master bus, I mean your stereo, your main left, right, or if you have a left, right center, the main slider fader on your audio console. Master bus processing starts with uh, EQ. And any EQ you do on your master bus processing is going to affect the entirety of your mix. I generally will recommend to only EQ on the master bus if you have a very specific problem area in the room or a very specific problem area that you know of on the PA that wasn't solved during step number one, get your PA right, and it wasn't solved during step number two, get your band right. Generally, these are very small notches 
one to two dB in very specific areas. I'll give you an example. In one of the churches that I've mixed at, they had a very interesting subwoofer configuration where they had flown subs and floor subs. And at about 68 hertz, there was about a plus six dB boost in the subs. Now, for whatever reason, it was a physics thing. We had professional people come in to take a look at the PA. It was a, a room problem that wasn't easily solved due to budget issues. So I notched that out on the PA. I did a, a, a minus three to minus six cut at 68 hertz at around, you know, as tight as I could get it. And that eliminated that problem spot in the room. It's not a perfect solution. And remember, this is step three. This is not step number one. You can't EQ out and try to uh, get your PA to a place where it's going to be right and where you can turn it up to 11 just by doing master bus EQ. You need to have a professional come in and look at your system and, and properly tune it for you to have success. This is for minor adjustments. After EQ, we go on to compression. Now, you might have heard compression described as the glue to your mix, and it really does act that way. One of the magical pieces about compression, though, is that whenever you turn up the volume, compression allows you to reduce what are called transients. Transients are very fast moving sound waves that are typically associated with things like drums or uh, instruments that have very fast attacks. Transients can be very displeasing to the ear because they kind of make you wince a little bit. And they're very difficult to catch whenever you're going through your regular mixing process. Putting a nice and smooth, slow compressor on the master bus with either an auto release or a similar uh, setting will allow you to catch some of those transients with a, with a correct attack setting to help to reduce some of the bitiness of the song. It will also work to reduce the dynamic range, which will help to um, lessen the very highest of highs um, coming out of your PA. So for example, if your snare is about plus dB, 3 dB in front of your mix, if you put some compression on it, that will reduce how far out the snare is while simultaneously bringing everything else up in line. We call it the glue because it helps to kind of keep everything together. This is especially important when we're mixing loud because the louder things get, the worse transients get to our ears and the harder it is to keep those things under control. And finally, here is the biggest secret of the business. I learned this from one of the best engineers out there. Master bus compression using a multi-band compressor. The multi-band compressor is magic because it allows you to compress very specific frequencies of the sound. Now, if you remember back in step one, I talked about Fletcher and Munson and the equal loudness curves. The magic of the multi-band compressor is that you can actually very specifically compress areas that are displeasing to our ears. You can see I I'm showing you a live look at one of the multi-band compressors that I have used on a DLive S5000 on my actual master bus running around 95 dB. This is my main secret to how you actually get a great sounding mix, turn it up to 11 without sending anybody for the doors. Mixing loud has three steps. Get your PA right or your environment right. Get your band right and get your master bus right. This has been Austin Harmon Mixes, How to Mix Loud. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I have a special surprise coming for you all out there in 2024. I filmed this in January of 24, so if you're watching this from the future, I hope that you're able to uh, participate in this. But coming this fall of 2024, I will be doing my very first live audio training. I am going to travel to a city near you where I am going to do live audio trainings, just me and some of our closest friends, where I will be answering your questions live in person with an actual band, actual speakers, and we will do mixing sessions together. More details are going to come, but if this is something that you're interested in, go to austinharmonmixes.com events 
and register so that we can keep in touch about events coming soon. This has been Austin Arma Mixes, How to Mix Loud. I hope this video has blessed you, and if you learned something, put a comment down below. This video uh, has been a long time in the making, and I hope you enjoyed it. God bless. I'll see you next time.